Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. We have a question. Mm-hmm. We have a question for um from Sophie, and she's asking: I reverted to Islam. I do dhikr, I do my salat, and yet I can't seem to enjoy the Quran. Be it listening or reading um, the different translation, I feel a strong resistance, and I get angry. Why? Thank you. So, <clears throat> dear Sophie, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that um, take from the Quran what is easy for you. Yeah. And if there is nothing easy for you, then it's maybe also not the time. But of course, the question is, what does it trigger in you? No, why is there anger? No, anger we say is one of the three defenders, no, of the ecosystem, and it's the one that reacts the first and wants to hit immediately everyone around. No. Second is the sadness that comes into play. And that is um, a kind of of sadness that is um, feels unfair. Yeah, it's like not fair what happens to to you. Or and the third one is fear. It is stronger, the strongest defense uh, mechanism. So the anger is the first. And so there is something happening, you know, beat by your past as a child, yeah, that you were coming in contact, that Quran maybe often has been used on you in a in a forceful way. You know, that it has you have been told to listen, to be quiet when you listen, or to to listen it more than you actually enjoyed. Whatever there is the reason, you know, but something is there and I would give it time and maybe you find out that when you read it yourself that there is not such a resistance yeah so that would be my my advice to you read it yourself and in that way you make it yours also and you will not focus on the meaning yeah you will just focus more on the sound and this is a another thing see there is an advantage not knowing uh, arabic in terms of perfect translations because the mind cannot kick in like when you know it and um, so the sound can come deeper right now if you know the translation then just try not to think too much in that moment you know because again it cannot be embraced just by the mind yeah, the mind will give you always many options and gives you also doubts yeah mind is a troublemaker yeah so it wants to 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 hold you away from something there is no doubt that the quran as it is revealed gives us a kind of reset yeah when we listen to it or when we when we recite it ourselves then um there happens a kind of very deep reset because it is the original matrix it is the original way it should be and there is also a great healing in it and when you are not ready for that when you are not ready for this healing for this reset then you will react with aversion no and you're not the only one you see 
I know other people that have a kind of allergy towards the Quran. In the Hindu side, it happens with people when they listen to the Vedas, yeah, that are recited in a very similar way than the Quran. And the Jewish side, it, listen, it happens to the people when they hear the Torah. You know? In the Christian side, it doesn't happen so much because they use the languages of the country and so it is not such a such a difficult thing you see but the arabic is one of the sacred languages and has a very strong power has a very strong power already in the word islam is a great power yeah and this power works on us so to say the word islam relaxed and joyful is not easy even for muslims it is not easy yeah because it comes directly to the point yeah it says submit and who is there that can say i'm completely submitted to everything yeah so we all fight with certain resistances that we have and whatever triggers it, that is a help. So for you, it would be helpful to recite it. Yeah? And then see what happens. You know? In our past, it is recommended to read the Surah Yasin in the morning. And this is a very, very powerful surah. It's called the heart of the Quran. And there is a lot of healing again inside. Yeah. Also protection, also inspiration, also wisdoms, and so on and so on. There is a lot, a lot to discover. Yeah. Start with that. And have a certain patience till it may work for you if after that you still have this resistance then take it easy then it's not for you you know it is not a must yeah it's not like ordered yeah, that you have to read it you may read it you may recite it yeah uh, you may listen to it but it's not a must okay I hope this helps you a little bit and in general we can say that when you start a spiritual path you will always come to points that they are difficult for you. You will find that you are 90% in agreement in love with what is a path but there will be 10% that you are not so much happy about. Yeah. It can be all kinds of things. It depends which path you follow. But there is this point yeah, coming. Yeah, there is these things that we have a resistance towards it. No? And um, this is the, the ego block that fights for its survival. Yeah? Otherwise, what should be there to resist? No. Therefore, do what you can. Do it with the greatest effort you can. Do it with the greatest love you can. But when there is a limit, don't try to break the limit immediately. No? The limit is there to see something. And through this, we can make the next step. Yeah, if we just force ourselves that will be not good for anybody. Yeah. There is no force. There is only a point to see and then you go further. All right. And this is what we have to accept. Yeah. From time to time we come to limits. From time to time we are blocked. We are stuck somewhere. Yeah. then sit 
sit with it, be patient in this moment. No? And what you do not understand, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Yeah. And especially with the Quran, there is many passages, there are many possibilities to get a shock or to say, oh my God, what what that what can that mean? No. Then it's better that you ask someone who knows more and um, not to go too hard on conclusions. No. We can say that the Quran is like an ocean. And to cross the ocean without direction through an instrument, no, is actually not possible. Because the streams will bring you finally just in a huge circle. Or bring you somewhere where you don't want to go, actually. So you need a guidance. And this can be either through um, books that have been written by people that know more than us, or by somebody that you trust, yeah, one sheikh, one scholar, whatever, and um, this is how you will find your way, okay. And then also accept, Marana used to say that often, that not any every question can be answered. Yeah, he said this idea that every question you have has an answer is like you would ask the sun to come closer and closer and closer, and if she would do that, you would get burned. Yeah. So there is moments where some questions cannot be answered. But Mohindin in Arabi said, there comes a state, there comes a, a maqam, where all your questions will be clarified. Yeah. So, sometimes this is the moment where we have to wait. All right? And um, if you enjoy Zika, if you enjoy the prayers, if you enjoy the adab of Islam, that's already a lot of joy, isn't it? Yeah. And you go with that joy. And I promise you, sooner or later, you will also fall in love with the Book of Love. That's why I call it the Book of Love, because it leads to love. Yeah. As it has been written by a loving hand, it has been received by the greatest lover, yeah, and it has been given by love. For this reason, we call it the Book of Love. And there is no path that I know from where they have a greater love poetry than in Islam. Yeah. And I'm always happy to be taught differently. Yeah? If there is anyone who says this is much greater, I'm very happy to hear about it. But what I know in this moment, this is the, the one path that talks in the most high way about love that I know. Yeah. And the poetry they do, or they did, is above all, yeah. And I think it is not from nothing that people like Rumi, like Hafiz, are the most quoted poets in the world. Yeah. From all traditions, they come there and they steal their poems and they use them for their talks and this and that. And um, because they are attractive, yeah. They are attractive as they are emanated from a loving heart. You know? So, you shall see, inshallah. 
Thank you very much for your question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.